Hey there, Geeks. Tim with MajorGeeks.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to run PowerShell scripts. They are a shell and scripting tool that you have built into Windows, primarily used by server admins, IT techs to manage multiple computers because you can do this stuff through the DOS prompt, but you could set up a script to manage multiple computers. However, there are some cool ones for the end user. So let's take a look at how it works. You're going to want to get into your command prompt as an admin. So I'm using Windows 10. You shouldn't be too far off from where I am going. Uh, Windows Administrative Tools, PowerShell, right click on PowerShell and run as administrator. And now you're into the PowerShell. So the question is, where are we at? So you want to find out what your current policy is, whether you can run scripts or not. So it's git dash execution policy Did I have space no. and it's going to tell you what your status is it should be restricted by default meaning you'll probably have difficulty running some of these so you have four choices excuse the boring part but restricted which you're looking at all signed which will run scripts that are signed with a digital signature remote signed which means it won't run scripts you get from the internet unless they have a digital signature and you have to go through the prompts and then of course if you've run it before you won't get those prompts again and finally probably the most popular is unrestricted so now that we know we have git dash execution policy restricted we can type in similar set dash execution policy and decide with a space what you want to do so let's go with unrestricted that'll allow me to run whatever I want you get a lot of this if you're using the PowerShell. We can click A for yes to all, Y for yes. And now, of course, it's nothing pretty. There's no graphical user interface with DOS. So now what we can do is just go back and retype what we did before, which is get execution policy. And as you can see, now we are unrestricted where we were restricted. So now you can run them. That is the long and short of it. That's how you get PowerShell to work. So if that's all you're looking for, you can bail out. We're just going to play around with a few things here for a couple of minutes just so that you can see it, how it works, and we'll go from there. So let's close this out. What you'll notice is this is a PowerShell script. This is the way they come. They either come with this or they come in a folder with multiple files. So in this case, if I double click that, as far as it's concerned, it's a notepad file. But if you right click, run with PowerShell, it'll open and close because that's what these scripts do. So if it's just the single file, you're going to find that it's probably going to require switches, which means you're going to have to go to start, get your command prompt open again, have this file in the folder that you want, and you're going to need to know what the switches are. So in other words, you'd have to type git dash os space dash command dash command dash command on and on you go till you get to where you want it to be and that's why sometimes people will script them afterwards because they're a little complicated to type over and over and over again so those are a little more for advanced users it's a little harder to go beyond that right now because if you go to any page where you download just the powershell script you'll find the, the bunch of switches in there that you can use so it's a little difficult to go over those individually now for the most part again everything is for the most part if it comes into a zip file with multiple files sometimes you'll get a GUI so let's run as administrator as you can see what this is is it's a command it's not the PowerShell directly so it's the actual script so let's uh, run it as administrator and as you can see you almost got a little bit of a GUI here you often when you do this yes no stuff and any other simple script like the last one I showed you once I hit a button, whoops, it's going to close. Let me get that back up. A lot of these are automatically set. That's why you need the switches. So you'll notice I hit Y and it ignored me. So make sure we put yes. There it goes. So there's your main menu. You can make a backup. Again, remember most of these scripts, this isn't any different. It just doesn't close the window, in other words. So it's doing the same thing it would do. However, because it's a command, it's running a script to PowerShell, it will actually not close it'll bring you back to an interface it's tolerable that's why i said these things are kind of neat for more of the home users for example trying to uninstall office or a tech who finds himself in the spot where he needs to do that just using uninstall office tool for an example 
Um, number two. Of course, I don't have Office on here, but there you go. That's how fast the script runs. And they're neat because there's no installer. It's not even a portable app. It's just when you're done, you can delete it, drag it around on a thumb drive with you, and pretty easy. Let's delete space. But you can see it's pretty simple to use. Again, you know, if you get just a single script, Typical users want to avoid it, but if you see, like on Major Geeks, you're looking at, you see all these nice screenshots like this, it's probably something you can use. Four to close, and that's it. So the only difference between this and this is this is using a script to use this, so it kind of pretties it up. I kind of wish they were all like that. I think they'd be more popular, but it is what it is. But all I wanted to do is just kind of show you how to use one of these PowerShell scripts because there's some really cool stuff in there. So as always, way over here outside my screen, click subscribe over there to be cool. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.